Hey, Viola, hey, I want to know about all things vaping. Oh, well, if you're going to ask me about vaping, I have to say what? Tune in to today's Medical History Mystery. So today I was driving down the street and I saw somebody roll down their window and just, it looked like there was a fire in the car. There was just like smoke coming out. And I look over to my husband and I'm like, what the heck is that? And he's like, that person's vaping. And I was like, Hmm, I don't know that much about vaping, but I know it's pretty bad for you. Tell me the scoop. Yeah. So I've seen this before. People will pull up to a red light and, and they'll open their window and out comes the nuclear atomic fission cloud of vapor, right? That just comes out of their, their car. And you know, in about 10 seconds, you're going to be driving through that cloud. Okay. So make sure your air conditioner or whatever's on recirculate because you don't want to breathe that stuff in. But why? What's so bad about it? It's just vapor. Okay. But it's not vapor. Uh, that's one of the greatest misconceptions about vaping. It's not vapor at all. It's aerosol. And if anybody's an expert on aerosols, it's us. Okay. So First of all, that cloud, that huge plume, right, comes from most vaping devices. But for example, the Juul device is the exact opposite. Now, if you know about Juul, you've heard a lot about it. You know, the Juul device was really designed, the makers of Juul will tell you, and I don't have to speak for them, but they would say, you know, we really designed the product for smokers to, to take some of the market away from big tobacco, right? To have them use our products so we can make millions too, right? And, and so they made their product as part of an electronic cigarette, if you will, or an e-cig. And they made it with flavors to make it attractive because you couldn't find those flavors in tobacco products. Okay. Well, unfortunately, we know the danger with that, which kids ended up liking the flavors so much, they started getting addicted to nicotine. And that whole thing just became problematic. But what did they use? A, a bit, jewel device, which only emits a little bit of a wisp. Most people could just kind of go, you know, and it's gone. That plume that you see from most vaping devices means something. It means particles. Now, here's the problem. You walk through the cloud somebody just left behind. Secondary exposure, okay? Those aerosols are now on you and in you. You're the person, let's say, who cleans up that area for whatever, maybe it's your job, whoever, maybe it's your house, you clean that area. Those particles have come to rest on those surfaces and now you're cleaning you get exposed as well, okay? So, all right, well, but it's only water vapor and a few other things, right? The problem is what's in the vaping, smoke, aerosol, vapor, whatever you want to call it, what's in that cloud? And so what do we know for sure? We know that depending on what the product is, if it's nicotine or if it's cannabis related, there are some things in vape that just are bad for us. And one of the first things is heavy metals. So, cadmium, tin, zinc. These are not things you want to put in your body. If someone gave you the option and said, hey, I want you to take this thing and it's going to stick cadmium in your lungs or you know, zinc in your lungs, why would I want to do that? Yet patients do it all the time when they vape. What else? Well, the original e was invented by a pharmacist, if you can believe it, in 2003. So we don't have a very long history with e-cigs or vaping devices, but keep this in mind. In addition to the heavy metals, there are other known carcinogens, benzene, toluene, acrolein. What else? There's flavoring agents. Some of the flavoring agents are dangerous to us. So give me some flavoring agents, Viola. Okay. Vanillin, which is used to make a vanilla flavor. Simonaldehyde, which is used to give it a cinnamon flavor and diacetyl, which is used to give it a butter flavor. Some combination of those flavoring agents is used in a lot of vape cartridges because otherwise vaping just sort of tastes and smells like skunk, okay? So you wanna give it a, an attractive flavor and, and entice the patient to use it. But let's just use the last one, for example, acrylene. Uh, sorry, not acrylene, uh, uh, diacetyl. So diacetyl gives it a buttery, like creme brulee sort of flavor, okay. But diacetyl, when you inhale it over long periods of time, causes a, an obstructive respiratory condition known as bronchiolitis obliterans. 
It's more commonly known as popcorn lump. Now, when I say this, some pharmacology experts out there, people who speak on cannabis, say what? Oh, that's when your lungs end up looking like popcorn. There's nothing to do with that at all. Popcorn lung was named popcorn lung because the first patients identified with this condition were workers in microwave popcorn plants. They would breathe the stuff in. Why? Because the acetyl was used to give microwave popcorn its buttery flavor. You can eat all you want, I guess, but when you breathe it in, it's problematic. So I'm not even talking about the effects that cannabis can have or tobacco can have. I'm talking about the actual vape itself. So you add tobacco or cannabis to that, and now you've got a twofold, threefold negative situation in your lungs. Right. So take let's look at both of them real quick, just as some because we've talked about this before, right? So nicotine, it's an addictive substance, right? It has negative effects on our health, right? Raises blood pressure, raises heart rate. Has It has effects that are not happy for the patient and not happy for us because we use things like anesthetics that also raise the heart rate and blood pressure, right? Especially when we talk about epinephrine. Okay, so that's the first one. Let's talk about cannabis. Cannabis also raises heart rate, raises blood pressure and causes immunosuppression. Again, not happy in dentistry, why? Because look, I love us, we, we, we're a great profession, but we work in a cesspool, okay? So you're creating injury in an environment that's like teeming, a media teeming with bugs, okay? So they're gonna grab a foothold whenever they can, especially if you provide them one with cannabis, okay? But even the act of vaping itself causes endothelial cell damage in the lungs. What are the long-term effects of that damage? We don't know. What are the long-term effects of exposing the lung tissue to the solvent that's been used in creating that vape cartridge? Some solvents like benzene, medium chain triglyceride, so MCT oil, uh, even, you know, uh, for a while we were using vitamin E acetate and so cases of Evali developed. Evali was electronic cigarette or vaping associated lung injury. Over 2000 people got Evali, over 60 people died from vitamin E acetate, which is a, something you find in food all the time. So it's the fact, the act of vaping itself that causes the damage. And then when you add on the other components, that's where it becomes problematic. But I think the single biggest issue with vaping, Pam, is not what it does. It's the impression people have of vaping, which is it's better than smoking. I'm not smoking. It's got to be better for me, right? But it could be just as harmful, if not more harmful than smoking. I was going to say, at least smoking has a filter in it. You're probably better off just lighting up a cigarette or, I don't know, smoking a bomb. Who knows? So <laughs> well, Yeah. Are there oral side effects to vaping? Yeah, that's the thing. Now, as harmless as vaping sounds, it's just vaping. Keep in mind that vaping itself can cause lots of morphologic changes to the tissues and can cause its own cadre of, of pathologies. So just to come off the top of your head, if you had to come up with two or three. First of all, most modern vaping devices operate at temperatures between 350 and 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Imagine the morphologic changes you might encounter if a patient blasting their palate, for the most part, or other oral tissues, with what amounts to something from a furnace. I mean, 400 degrees Fahrenheit, that's nothing to, you know, something to take lightly, okay? That's going to cause burns and problems with the tissue over time. Okay. Then you've got one, the solvents themselves. Let's say we just decided to use something very simple, like MCT oil. Okay, which is used as a, a cart as a, a vaping solvent. A lot of cartridges have MCT oil. Or isopropyl alcohol, which is also used to create a cannabis extracts. Okay. We don't know the long-term effects, but we can tell you this much. MCT oil is very sticky. So you're just giving the bacteria and other microbes in the mouth an extra foothold. Okay. I'm gonna stick even tighter to the teeth and the mucosa because I got this sticky stuff helping me. Isopropyl alcohol is very dry. Okay, so you've got now you've got the opposite. You've got xerostomia, lack of saliva. And so now that's even more grief uh, for the oral cavity. Not to mention the fact that, you know, by drying the tissues out, there's more likely to be trauma, et cetera. Okay. What else? Well, let's take a look at oral cartridges. Ah, I don't vape. Ah, I take a, a oral oil or I use a gummy. Well, gummies are gummy. Yes, we don't have to go very far with that one. 
right? They help the stuff stick to your teeth as well. And oral oils, well, they're basically made of propylene glycol and glycerin. Not, not, very, not very harmful on their own because we use them in a lot of pharmaceuticals, but propylene glycol can be drying. It's a humectant, but in higher concentrations, it could be a drying agent. And glycerin is very sticky, much like we talked about before with MCT oil. It allows the bacteria and other microbes in the mouth to latch on even more firmly. And, and so, you know, if the patient doesn't really brush or floss as often as they should, especially now during the pandemic, a lot of people did not, that just increases the risk of, of decay and, and carry formation, even on places where you don't expect to see carries, you know, interproximal surfaces, that sort of thing, because it's, you know, you didn't think to look there. That's really interesting. And that's something we have to keep in mind because there's sometimes we see in our patients that there seems almost like an unexplained increased risk for or, or increased incidence of caries and periodontal disease. And so this is absolutely a question that we may have to ask them. Think about it, man. Think about who your average vapor is. Yes, it's older folks like me who are trying to stop smoking, but it's also a lot of young people. Now, I don't want to say that we don't think of everything in dentistry, but sometimes we're lulled into a false sense of security. Like, oh, this person's in their 20s. I don't expect to see advanced periodontal disease and caries. But the fact that they vape puts them like 20 years in the future when it comes to their oral cavity versus their physiology, because they've had this increased risk after all these years of vape. Wow. Well, I guess at this point, it's been out for almost 20 years. So now we're going to start to see long-term effects of vaping. And we can obviously keep our eyes out for short-term effects. And also don't assume they're not doing it because you've known them since they were a kid or you know their family or something else. So I think this is definitely something we should always keep in the back of our mind, you know, from an education standpoint, but even from a diagnostic standpoint. Sounds great, Pam. Remember one more thing about vaping. Just, just because a patient vapes doesn't mean that they're at risk, but you should be on high alert because again, the, we didn't really touch on it in this episode, but it's the other ingredients like cannabis and nicotine that, that add to our grief. And if anyone should know this, it should be us. We in the, the dental professions were the first, we were the front line in the, in the battle of tobacco, right? When it happened 50 years ago and all those systemic and oral complications of tobacco use, well, guess what? We're on the front line of this battle now too with the vaping. Yeah, so oral cancer, obviously. I mean, you're adding heat that we haven't seen before with nicotine and cannabis and coupled with all of those other ingredients that you mentioned. It just sounds awful. Oh, oral cancer, if I could just leave you with this parting thought, remember a lot of people share their vaping device, right? You know, they use it, they give it to someone else to use. Now, if it's cannabis that's in that vaping uh, device, cannabis causes immunosuppression. Well, sharing it means what? You're increasing the risk of HPV transmission. And we all know that HPV causes head and neck cancer. And the fact that the cannabis makes you immunosuppressed increases the risk of that as well. Wow. So much to think about. So... Definitely, it's important to know that, yeah, it's not just vaping and understanding what's in that cloud is pretty terrible. More reasons to walk around with your N95. <laughs> well, and roll up your windows. <laughs> and roll up your windows. Oh, my gosh. Well, for Medical History Mysteries, we'll see you next time. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, everybody. Mm-hmm.